Hi, I'm Tiffany Irvin. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel and tuning in for another episode of From Passion to Purpose. Hey, if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, would you do me a favor and click that little button right now? It doesn't cost you anything, but it sure would help me a lot. If you've known me for any amount of time, you know how much I love football. If you're new to the channel and haven't yet met me, well, it's no secret that I'm a huge sports fan, and I actually got the opportunity to work in the industry as a sideline reporter for high school and college sports for many years. I've met lots of coaches over the years with winning records and lots of accolades. Today, I want to introduce you to one who may not have a winning record on the field, but he is producing winners in the young men that he influences every single day. Stay tuned to learn more. Mark Spear was hired as the new football coach at Western Carolina University to begin the 2012 season. In eight years, his record is just 29 and 51. But that has not changed the unwavering support of both the parents, the players, even the administration. <laughs> in fact, he's gotten two contract extensions in the last several years, even after finishing three and eight and three and nine. Why would the university make this kind of commitment? It may have something to do with words like leadership, brotherhood, teamwork, faith, family, even passion. I first interviewed Coach Spear only a few weeks after he was hired by the university, and then again a little over a year ago in his office, and it was there that he shared with me a very special book that he uses to influence his players. I've even put a link in the description below, so in case you'd like to order your own copy. More importantly, Coach Spear explained to me how he has found his passion and made it his purpose. We have... Um leadership councils. We we have position councils. And and what we do is is we have a book. It's, it's a Navy SEALs make your bed. It's 10 chapters. I send them out homework um, to our to our leaders is this is a book about Navy SEAL training. When it gets hard and tough, you know, how do you overcome because leadership only comes true leadership only comes when things are hard because when things are good. So that's that's part of our thing is empowering our players and if they're empowered when it gets hard they'll stay if all you got is one leader or one way or here's how we do it you never empower the people below you yeah when it's working they're going to stay but when it gets hard they're gone and that's when you need them the most is when things aren't going it's your darkest hours when you need them the most and then what we do is in the bible galatians uh, chapter 6 1 through 10 is a, is a foundation of how to be a good teammate. So each week we go over one, one uh, chapter in this book and then we go over one verse of Galatians chapter 1 through 10, which has nothing to do, if you read it, biblically. It's more about brotherhood. That's what that verse is about. So I kind of changed some of the religious stuff to our team, those words. And so what I do is each position group they go over one verse and they go over one chapter. I have them talk to their position group about what that means to their, you know, what that means to a quarterback group is something different than a defensive line group. So I have them go over what that means to their group. Then we as coaches and we as that leadership council, we get together once a week on Wednesdays and we talk about what does that mean for our team because determination and grit is what wins championships. Determination and grit only happens when things are bad. So if you're not prepared for that and you don't talk about that and you don't empower those players, when when determination and grit are needed most, they don't know they're not prepared for it. And so for me, leadership's preparing them. My wife made it, I mean my first time there was 110 players coming in me with little bitty problems. But to me, when you have 110, I was dying, not by a slash in the wrist, but a million pin pricks. And she made a great statement to me early on. She said, what do you think leadership head coaching was just going for one or two or whether to punt or not? The fun stuff, the X's and O's. No, leadership is you got 110 guys with little bitty problems. 
that are big problems for them. But to me, it's, God, I can't do football because I got 30 players coming in with these little problems. Well, that's leadership. You know, and, and my wife hit me over the head early, and I said, dang, you know, I hate it when she's right, but usually she is. But for me, the retention part happens when you empower the soldiers because a great plan in war only happens when those soldiers are empowered to go do it. And you've trained them and you've and you helped them to understand that when it gets hard, when they think about quitting, when this stuff we're doing because the coach told me to do it ain't working, they leave. They're not interested anymore. But if they're empowered, and when they see it gets hard, and you're down 14 points, and you find that determination, you find that grit, and you find a way to win, and they see, you know, I tell them it's the baby principle. A lady struggles and strains for nine months, and, and she just ready at times, get this baby out of me. I heard my wife say, get this baby out of me. When that baby gets there, that nine months of strain, there's nothing you love more. And and to love something, you got to strain through it, and that determination and that grit and that retention part only comes when you empower the very lowest, who, who everybody else perceives the very lowest. If that very lowest isn't empowered, you're going to lose them. If it's working and we're successful, they buy into it. When it doesn't work, why should they buy it? Because they're not invested in it. For me, it's about, and to sum it up, it's about you got to go, the, the character is, we look for character more than we look for talent. That guy going to work, is he going to go to class? He's got to have talent, no doubt. But we'll take character over talent all the time because they're going to let us develop them and then once we develop them and we empower them, then they will stay. Is recruiting something you can do alone or is this a team effort? No, it's absolutely a team effort because you're, you're asking them to be a part of a team. you got to sell team. Uh, obviously, individually, number one, we as a coaching staff have to be on the same page. And there has to be a common vision and you can't, you know, so often, I think as a leader, you know, a quarterback coach, boy, like this great player, and he can do it, yeah, but if he's not going to be here four years. You know, I, I never really question the talent part. As our coaches go out, and, and I don't even have to look, I do, but I don't ever question the talent part, what shows up on film, because I feel like, my wife can look at a film and say that player's a good player or not. I know when my guys bring me, I don't really, I, I want to see it because I just want to know. I don't question that. But he can be sharp, but if he ain't about what you're about, he ain't going to bring to you what you want him to bring to you. We can have a great quarterback, but if he's a selfish individual, if he's a guy that's going to be downtown, um, a bunch of foul language, uh, partying on Friday night. He's going to be a guy that's, okay, I don't like the weight room. Okay, I'm a quarterback. I don't like the weight room. And I'm going to always show up late in the weight room. I tell our quarterbacks, you're a leader. I don't care if you're a leader or not. As a quarterback, you're a leader. You're either a good leader or a bad leader, but you're a leader. And so as a quarterback, that guy can take this team to a different level. But if he's going to show up late every day, to wait, what message is he sending to everybody else? So if he's not going to be a workhorse, blue-collar mentality quarterback for us, I don't want him. And I tell him that from the get-go. I'm going to push you harder in the weight room because that's not what you want to do. I don't have to coach you on the field. You got that. The good Lord gave you that. I'm My job is not to screw you up. <laughs> but I identify, here's what his talents are. Now, I don't know what kind of weight room guy he is, but I know usually if he's talented in this, a lot of times here's where they're not talented in. And I go address him from the get-go. Here's what's going to be expected of you in the weight room. 
here's what's going to be expected of you in the classroom because if you're really gifted here, a lot of times they may not be, and I try to identify where you're not. And you don't have to be in the weight, great in the weight room, but what you got to do is show up every day and you got to work because of the message you're going to send to everybody else. Again, even a star quarterback, to answer your question, individual versus group, you still have to be use your individual talents. You know, there's some coaches that recruit better than others, but he's got to go recruit. You got to sell the same message, but it's got to be a unified message. And then I think what we sell the best is, okay, I go out in my individual area to recruit. We do it by geographical areas. So each coach has a geographical area. They know what we want as a general team, but then they got to bring that guy back. And then the rest of our staff has to recruit the family part. Here's who we are. We're not individuals. And you, and, and you have to sell, and that's where Galatians chapter 6 Chapter 6, 1 through 10, that's all what that's about is, you know, what a brotherhood is, what it means to be a family. And so, you know, I think none of us can do this alone. And, and, and this makes you bad. To be a, a Navy SEAL, they're the best of the best, the very best of the best. And all the tasks they do, they always have a partner. You always have a buddy. Because to do something so hard, you can't do it day in and day out. You have to have somebody there to hold you accountable. But if it's not a team, team-oriented thing, and you're not selling that as a team, you're, you're not going to be successful. Because when, when you go out as a recruiter and then they hear everybody else has the same message and you're living the same message, they may say it a different way, but that same message is getting across. That's the power of recruiting to me. It's 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 a it's got to be a group, and uh, some are more gifted than others, but it's got to be a group event. When a recruit comes on campus, or their family comes on campus, or a home visit, even how much does that environment impact whether or not that that student or that family chooses to join you? It's everything. If you do not have positive energy and you do not have an engaged um, an engaged staff, they came, okay, getting back to your individual versus a group question, an individual might have gotten a player up here, but if he don't see, he don't see himself being here for four years, he doesn't see that, uh, the family atmosphere here, um, you know, we can bring somebody up here in January when that stadium is just a bunch of concrete and our staff there that, you know, is a whole lot different than when we bring a prospect up in the fall when that stadium's full. When they see the, the environment, the atmosphere, when they see, okay, I'm a defensive lineman, but the quarterback coach is coming up to me saying, man, we're glad you're here. Uh, yeah, I know who you are. I watched you on film, you know, and, and I'm glad you're on our team because for us to be good, you know, a quarterback coach telling a D-line prospect, for us to be good, we got to have you. Man, that, that sells that this – group this body in just some, a bunch of words they, they live it they are family and they care the thing i think our players do the best is when when players come here our nine out of ten guys whether they come here the thing they like best is they say the chemistry our players have they're not a bunch of clicks. It's black, white, it's offense, it's defense, it's skilled players versus linemen. They do things together. I tell them all this. You're here to find out is this family. To me, that's family. Every football coaching staff in America throws out that word family. And there's a million definitions of what 
family is, but the true definite, you, you know family. There's not a real definition of family, but you know it when you see it. You know it when you feel it. And that is what, again, helps recruit. And really, that helps develop because when a guy's sitting here and as a freshman, he's sitting here saying, man, did I make the right decision? I'm homesick. School's hard. My girlfriend's back home. I can't keep him here. All I want to, a coach can't keep him here. What keeps that player here is their teammate in that dorm at night saying, dude, you're going to make it. I was there. Just keep chugging. We've all been there. Family's what helps keep them here for, you know, the retention and development. And so it all, I mean, it's all tied together and it all goes back to recruiting the right people, developing the right people, preparing them. You know, this leadership training is to help prepare us for the hard time. Anybody can stay anywhere when everything's going good. It's the hard times, and then that's where your development comes through. And, and, and if it's, it can't be individuals. Individuals got to go do work, and you got to understand that it's all got to come back to that family vision. Or they walk in here, they got to feel that family. You can talk about it all you want, but if you got clicks, you know, and, and all that is, what's our purpose? Every day I talk to our players, you got to have a purpose. And then what, don't forget about your purpose. And you see the old, right here, the the the, the yoke. And this is in our locker room. It's everywhere in Galatians 6, 9. who we are. It says, never grow weary of doing good for a proper time. A man will reap what he sows if he doesn't give up. Sometimes we get tired. The great people, the great groups, the great People in life, they think to be great, you got to go be great. In Navy SEALs, being great is just being consistently good every day. And and the word, you know, the book, good's the evil of great, they throw that out. But I say, hold on a minute. That is correct. If your standard's good. But to become great, how do you become great? You don't just show up and do great things every day. Because you can. As humans, we're, we're, we're imperfect and... To the great ones are the ones that consistently never grow weary of doing good every day when everybody else gets tired of it. And so our mission is to become great. It, to me, that good is the, the the evil of great or the enemy of great. I know everybody's heard that. That, to me, talks about standard. If your standard is, just, let's just be good. But to become great, you're, you can't, it's got to be good every day because we will grow weary if we're trying to be extraordinary every day because we're not wired for that. We're going to burn out. But the great ones are the ones that consistently every day, every day you come to practice, every day you go to church, every day you have a family, you know, a man and a wife in a relationship creating a family, you got to every day, what's my purpose? And never grow weary because the what teenagers or no or old people now, it says in due time. Everybody wants it now. Never grow weary in due time. A person will reap what they sow. And then that last part, if we never give up. And so that's who we are, and, and that's our, in one word, I think every player on this team can tell you that's who we are. And if you live by that, you know, and, and every day you got to come with energy. And I think every day you got to be reminded what's our purpose, because sometimes we come just to check a box. And if we allow that to happen as leaders and as a leadership group, you know, and if it's always about the leader, and that gets back to enabling whoever you perceive as your lowest member, you got to empower them. And they've got to know what their purpose is. If they're always told what their purpose is, at a point they grow weary, you know, and so you, it, it all keeps coming back to, to that. 
This year, Coach Spear and the Catamounts will be playing spring football games due to the coronavirus canceling last year's fall season. Will he turn the program around as far as the win-loss column? Who knows? But what I am certain of is that he will continue to create lasting change, building men of character and integrity.